So I'm going to share uh, with you some of my experiences uh, implementing OAuth 2.0 with Angular. Uh, my name is Maria Corneva. I, I work as IT specialist for Alieri Solutions, a company based in Germany. Um, and I also write articles for IngiConf. If you want to drop a line, here are some contact details. But since we have really uh, um, tight schedule, I move straight forward to the agenda. That would be the normal agenda if I had an hour or two talking about this uh, topic. But today I'm just gonna concentrate on major takeaways from my recent project. And that's the setup. So we used Angular, we had customer authorization and resource server. And since this is a single page application, we had to use um, code as authorization grant type because this is the most secure one or the recommended one. And we ended up writing our own library but we were heavily inspired by OAuth 0. So that's the setup. So what are the main issues or pain points that we, we were facing during the implementation? For this, let's zoom into, into the login flow. So pretty straightforward. The user clicks on login, gets redirected uh, by the authorization server to the login page, uh, authenticates with the identity provider, and gets redirected by the redirect URI back to the application. So far, so good. But what if your application has to keep some state, for example, some input data? For this, you have to in encrypt your data and store it somehow securely in the browser, or maybe you have to store it in the database, um, keep the ID, and then pass it through the whole login loop to get it back and then to restore the data. So it's so one of the issues. What if you have multiple apps that all use the same login page? So then again, you have to come up with some parameters that you pass through the whole loop to the logging page so that you can steer uh, or manage its look and feel, or even the choice of the uh, identity provider. What if your app has some dynamic parameters um, so that the redirect URI is also dynamic, so you cannot just store it uh, at the authorization server without any wildcards. Sometimes logging is also um, optional. For example, it's just a nice feature allowing you to save some data if you're logged in. Um, so how do you know if the user is, um, has skipped the login? So if he or she gets back, how do you prevent uh, redirecting him or her back to the login page? Or how do you handle browser back? Um, well, timeout is usually, it's, it's a normal scenario for any login um, use case, but uh, we figured out we have to deal with the hiberna hibernate mode too. And we figured out that um, the internet connection gets restored just milliseconds after the authorization request gets fired on some systems sometimes, but we had to learn it the hard way. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Um, speaking about the opposite side. So if the user keeps working in your app, so you want him or her to stay logged in. So you have to refresh it. We um, didn't use refresh tokens because, uh, well, for now it's, it might be secure, but it's uh, still some use cases where it's not recommended. So we used prompt none and session cookie as one of the recommendations. But the thing is, if your authorization server is on a different domain, then your application has to create an iframe, attach the iframe, get the web message securely. And this has to be secure. Please, please, please do secure it and then deattach the iframe from the application. But if you are too quick, then some browsers, for example, Chrome, might in some cases cancel your authorization request. So that's again a thing that we had to learn the hard way. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Uh, multiple tabs is also pretty um, standard scenario. So one tab has to know if the user has logged out in a different tab. So we have to work with some event dispatching. Um, and of course, we have to deal with disabled cookies or blocked scripts, but this is just normal. It's not, nothing which is specific to the standard or to Angular. Um, let's look at the other side. Keeping or getting parameters uh, of the authorization request is also necessary on, on the other side because the login page has to have everything to make this authorization request back to the authorization server. Speaking of scope, client ID, redirect URI, code challenge method, code, code challenge, etc. And the login page has also to deal with double logging, has to prevent it uh, on the front end. And all the other stuff that I've already mentioned uh, on the application side. So as you see, this is just the first part of the whole flow, but it has a lot of interesting cases. For now, I'd say, um, I stop here because I think my five minutes are over, but I think I'm gonna write an article or even 
series of articles or even a book about that because so much things to tell you about the whole um, things, uh, the whole implementation experience. But for now, thank you for being here. Well, let's keep in touch. Thank you.